Okay, so thank you very much for um, taking the time to watch these stretches. Um, they're there for reference on the website or they're here for reference on the website. And what I would say is go on the advice that your specialist has given you. Very often they will pick and choose stretches for you to carry out. In those initial stages, it's really important that you um, don't overuse or don't overwork those stretches because you've got a lot of healing going on there as well. Um, so what I would suggest is that you take it easy. You never work into um, pain where it feels intense or more sharp. You always stretch to your limit. And if you can nudge it a little bit more, then that's brilliant. Most times, um, what I would recommend is a set of five second hold up to 10 repetitions. And often you have to use your common sense with that. It's much better to do five good repetitions and feel that you've worked and stretched that cord um, rather than doing 10 and being really uncomfortable at the end. So it's, it's, it's to be mindful of progressing that exercise as you can tolerate. And it, it goes without saying, you know, it, it's good to stretch at least two to three times a day in those initial phases, particularly if you've got a lot of stiffness there. Um, and then with that, hopefully as the days go on, you will find that your range of mo movement will continue to improve and also that the pain will settle down. If you're doing these movements, these stretches, and you do hear a pop, don't worry, because sometimes what can happen is that those little lymphatics can pop and it's nothing to be worried about especially with these particular stretches because they're a really gentle form of stretching. Um, so just if you are concerned about anything at all, please do contact one of the lymphedema team. We're here to advise and support you as best we can. So without further ado, let's do the first exercise. So the first stretch is for upper arm cording. So this is generally, if for example, this is my operated side and this is the side that my cording is present on, um, the cording may be um, into the armpit itself or it may well extend into the upper arm and potentially as far down as um, the top of the elbow joint. So with this, you can either lie down on your bed or on the floor. Um, resting your head on a, on a pillow or a cushion. You want to make sure that you've got good contact with the floor. And what you're going to do is keep your knees and your feet together. Your arms are going to be stretched out to the side. And then what we want to do is we want to move our legs away in the opposite direction to the operated side. So with this particular um, scenario, my operated side for the purpose of these exercises is going to be my right side. So I want to move my, keep my knees and feet together. I want to move them down towards the ground. With this, you want to hold for five seconds approximately, and then you're gonna come back into the starting position. And again, we repeat this 10 times. So just to show you again, you go to where your limit is. If you find that you can't go the whole way to the floor, that's absolutely fine. Just go to where you start to feel the stretch. And usually you'll feel it in around your armpit and extending into your upper arm. This stretch is really lovely as well as it stretches the whole length of the um, thorax here and all those tissues that are tight following your surgery and come back to the centre. Now if you find this particular stretch too much um, or if you find that it's actually not um, it's not putting a stretch on the cords what you can do is rather than have your arm out to the side you can take it up slightly further so again, this may then stretch the cords more where you can feel the movement. So with this movement in this position, then again, you can start to turn the um, knees over to the opposite side. 
and it just takes a different angle of a, on, the, on the fascia on your tissue here and into the armpit and upper arm to allow you to get a really good stretch. Holding it for a count of five seconds and then coming up to the centre and then just relax. So with that particular exercise I would encourage you to do it within your pain-free range of movement and I would encourage you to do it at five second hold and up to ten times. Okay, so the next stretch we're going to do is hand behind head. And with this one, this is really lovely for those people who are tight, again up in round the um, armpit and into the upper arm. And particularly for those that have um, surgical scars just on the side of the chest wall here below the armpit. With this one, you're going to take, place your hands behind your head. And then you're going to slowly take your elbows down towards the floor. Hold for a count of five seconds and then bring them back up again. Again, all these exercises are very gentle stretches. So you're just going to take it down towards the floor or the, the bed, hold it at your end of range, never working too much um, into pain or discomfort, just to the end, and then relax. And again, like I say, with this particular one, you're going to repeat five to 10 times. So I'll do two more. So bring that down through the range of movement, stretching it down towards the floor, holding it there and relax. And the final one, taking the elbows down, trying to reach that elbow onto the bed or onto the floor, holding that stretch and then relax. So like I say, with these stretches, your movement may be restricted. So if you can only get a small range of movement, that's absolutely fine. The key is the more you do it, hopefully you'll be able to nudge that little bit more each time and you'll slowly be work, able to work into that available range of movement. Okay. Okay. So... The next one is just a slight progression on from the hand behind head and with it what we're doing is we are going to um, stretch the lower trunk as well and this is a really really good one um, after your surgery because everything's really tight in around the, the side of the chest wall and potentially in around the breast area depending on where your um, surgical site is. So with this one Again, assuming that my surgical site is my right side, you're going to put your hands behind your head and you're going to take your arms down and then you're going to add an additional stretch like before where we take the knees and the feet to the opposite side. You go to your limit, then you take your elbows off. You take your elbows on towards the floor, stretch in, hold that stretch five seconds and then release to a starting position. And once again, you bring the elbows down towards the bed, hold that stretch and then release. So with all these stretches, it's a nice gentle stretch on where you're feeling it across your trunk, into your armpit and into your upper arm. Holding it for a count of five and then relax. And one more, bringing it down, holding it there and relax. And then you can bring your legs back up into position. So with that um, truncal twist it just increases that tension and increases that stretch a little bit more. So I would start off with the initial head behind shoulder to start with and if you find that too easy then you can bring in your, your truncal twist where you're bringing your legs to the opposite side. So the next movement we're going to do is hand over head stretching.
Now with this one, this is whenever um, you have cording or tightness that extends over the elbow joint. So the initial exercises are for the upper arm and are safe to do for all the stretching wherever it is along the length of your arm. But if we want, if we have tightness that extends over the elbow joint, we want to add in a little bit more of a stretch so that we can straighten that elbow out. And quite often, whenever you have um, cording in and over that elbow joint, you get restricted flexion or a restricted bending movement. So with this particular one, what we want to do is we want to keep your elbows as straight as they can and we want to keep your palms together. So starting off a similar position to before, this time we're going to interlace our fingers together, our palms are going to be touching. Our starting position is where our um, knees are bent our feet and our knees are um, equidistant, about hip width apart. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring your hands up as far as you can above your head. Now the important thing with this is that you want to make sure that you keep your elbows as straight as possible. So if we bring them up, our palms are facing each other, and our elbows are straight and we're going to try and take them as far over our head as we can. Hold for five seconds and then come back to a starting position. Now the cheat with this one is where when you move up you bend your elbows out more. Now that will not achieve a stretch on the cord so you really want to make sure with this one that your palms are almost super glued together and that you're bringing that movement up to where your limit is. Initially if the cord is very tight you might only get up to about here. So you go just to your end of your range of movement where you know if you push it any further it's going to be really uncomfortable. So you go to your end of range, hold it five seconds and then ease off. The idea is, like the other stretches, is that the more times that you repeat this and as the days go on, you gradually will work into that available range and be able to get the full range of movement achieved. Remember holding five seconds at the end of the stretch and then gently coming back down to your starting position. All these stretches, it's slow, controlled, gentle movements and should never um, have increased pain with the movement. Okay. So the extension for this exercise, hand overhead stretching, is similar to the previous one. So with it, we then want the trunk twist. Okay, so what we do is we get into position to start with, we clasp our hands, palms together, our arms come up above our head, so that's putting the stretch on the cord to your available range, and then you're going to go with the twist. So you want to twist around to your left side, keeping your knees and your feet together. Holding for a count of five and then coming up and returning to starting position. Now if you want you can rotate to the other side as well but basically what you're wanting to do is whenever you do the introduce the rotation of your trunk or moving your legs to the opposite side you're moving away from the side of your surgery. So my surgical side is my right side and as an extension to this movement I want to move my legs over to the left. Holding it for a count of five and then coming back to the start position. 
and then just complete that movement whenever you've completed 10 on each side or to the affected side. You just bring your arms slowly back down to the start position. You must remember with this one that you stretch the cord first, arms straight, elbows straight, tighten it over to get the full stretch in the cord, then rotate the trunk. So you're taking the legs away from your operated side, holding it for a count of five, then bring them back up to the center and then bringing your arms gently back down to the start position. So the next stretch we're going to um, go over is the self skin uh, traction flexion stretch. Bit of a mouthful. And, and this is a really lovely one, especially we talk about the connective tissue, the tightness that can occur in around that scar site and in around the tissue surrounding the scar. Um, so this one not only works um, the cording to stretch the cord, but it also works on that fascia or connective tissue. So with this, what you want to do is you want to lie down in the same position. You're going to lift your arm up above your head, elbow straight, and then in the axilla or over your breast tissue, you're going to then pull our attraction on the tissue, on the skin. Imagine that you have an elastic band going from your armpit down to the hip joint or hip bone on the same side. And you want to stretch that band down towards your hip. Hold it for five seconds and then ease off. Again, just stretch the tissue as if you're stretching out that elastic band, elongating it. Hold it for a count of five and then ease off. And again, just stretching down, holding it for a count of five and then easing off. And then whenever you've repeated it up to 10 times, you take your arm down. Now, that's the first easy method of a skin traction. Um, we can do another self skin traction. So if that one there isn't just quite getting the stretch on the cord and on the, the fascia as much as, as you would like it to, that you're not feeling that, that um, tissue stretch, what we can do this time is do the same movement, only we can go in a diagonal. So once again, we take our arm, keeping our elbow straight, and we take our arm up through flexion into elevation over the top. And then this time we've got to imagine our elastic band is coming from our um, armpit to the opposite hip joint. So our hand goes onto our bare skin and this time our elastic band is stretching over to the opposite hip. Holding it for a count to five and then you ease off. Hold again. Sorry, traction first. Hold for a count to five and then ease off. And again, with the other stretches, you're working up to 10 repetitions at a time. Both these skin traction, self skin traction uh, stretches are really lovely because not only does it stretch the cord because you're getting that full range of movement and you're stretching right from the armpit up and over that elbow joint, keeping the elbow straight. But with the traction, whether it's straight down to this hip or across to this one, you're adding that extra stretch and it just helps to release all those tight tissues um, following the, the um, sort of the, the cording, but also following the uh, surgery, surgery and the adherence of the tissues. So this exercise is another one for um, self skin traction and it is um, the arrow. So if you imagine you pull a bow on an arrow on a, for a bow and arrow 
So with this one, lying down in the same position, your operated side is out and then your um, good hand is resting on your chest wall and you are stretching that over to the good side. So you apply more of attraction but your affected side is on a stretch. So traction, self-traction out for a hold of five and then ease it off. Again, tension on for a count of five and then off. To be honest, sometimes it takes, depending on, on where your cord is, you want to achieve that stretch. You don't want it to be um, a sharp pain, but you want to feel that stretch. So it may be that this movement doesn't quite give the stretch, but this one is too difficult to achieve. So you may find going out at almost an angle, but then doing a traction either across the chest wall or down on a diagonal will give you that pull, that stretch that will allow you to feel that the tissues are stretching out. Just remember that you hold it for a count of five and then you release. So the next movement I'm going to do is filled in cross um, roll. Um, always a tricky one to actually pronounce. With this one, it's a really lovely stretch because it gives you that forward um, protraction of your shoulder. And we know after surgery that every all the tissues can get really tight and restricted. So it gives that movement along your um, shoulder blade, but then as we stretch out, it stretches all the tissues in around the side of your chest wall and obviously into the cording in your upper arm um, extension, obviously down into your um, forearm. Um, if I show you first of all actually this side so that you get, you're get you getting the protraction or um, of the, sh the scapular protraction. The starting position with this is side lying. Now I appreciate I'm on my pretend operated side here but I want to show you um, that first movement. So your side lying, knees are bent, feet are together and the operated arm is uh, um, operated side is on top. Now what you want to do is you want to bring those palms over the other palm as far as you can so you can see that my arm is extending out over my fingers on my other side. Then you bring your hand back and then you take it back and round to the other side. So this is a really lovely one because you've got that trunk rotation there, but you're also working all the movements in around the shoulder blade. So you come up and over, back palms to meet, and then you reach forward, reach back, extend over, feeling that stretch all on the operated side. So like I say, for the purpose of demonstration, this is my left side this time so that you can see it on the video clip and then reaching forward. So you come back, extend over, hold for a count of five, bring it back round to join the other hand and reach forward as far as your fingertips can reach. So come back, lift up, very gentle movement, nice curve, and you just work to your limitations. Obviously, if you've got restriction, you go as far as you can comfortably manage. The idea is the more you do it, the more we can work into that movement. And remember, 
that you never work into where it gives a sharp pain. It's always just to the edge. Come back round. And settle back. Okay. Really lovely one, that Philentricast move. It's quite similar to the first one we gave you where you were lying down and stretching out which is equally as beneficial, but with that you're just getting the movement of the shoulder blade and you're just getting that um, working all into those muscles, um, which will help increase your range of movement, um, decrease any tightness that you're feeling um, in and around that connective tissue and that fascia um, along that operated side, and, and really just help to loosen everything up around that area. So with this one, this is a sideline circumduction. Oh, circumduction, yeah. Sorry. So with this one, this is a sideline circumduction. Now this can be carried out whenever the previous philentricus movement um, is you're not getting the same benefit as you were initially. Again, it's a similar stretch, but rather than taking the, the movement out to the side. This time we're taking it up and over. And again, it's working in round um, the movements of your um, shoulder area just to increase that final range of movement and increase the flexibility and the um, loosening of tissues. Okay, so, so for benefit of demonstration, my operated side is the left on this occasion. Okay, so we start off in a similar position to the normal philindricus um, stretch. The um, operated side is on top. Your palms are on top of each other. And to start this time, you're reaching as far forward as you can. So arm is sliding forward, so you're getting protraction of that shoulder blade. Then your arm's coming back. And this time, you're coming up and around like a clock. You're coming round to the side, hold it for five seconds and then coming up to come back and then join. If you want to think of it that you're starting at um, nine o'clock or three o'clock depending on what side you're working on, you reach forward, you come back, then you turn your palm up and you follow around to 12 o'clock, right round the clock to as far as you can go, hopefully reaching three o'clock, palm is up, hold for a count of five, then thumb points up, turns and takes you back anti-clockwise around the clock again, turn your palm and then come back to starting position. So just one more time and um, for purpose of demonstration, reach forward as far as you can, come back, then start to turn the palm, move the arm around the clock, nice gentle movements, head comes with you, Round three o'clock, hold that stretch for a kind of up to five. Then thumb goes up to direct the movement around to 12 o'clock. Turn the palm and back round to the starting position. So like I say, with this movement, that's just for those of you that have got that full range of movement with the normal philentricast move and you just want to gain that little bit more range of movement at the end. It is a challenging one and it's not one that I would start off with, um, but for those that feel that they need a little bit more progression, um, that's one for you to give a go. So the next one is um, hands and knee sit back or for those of you that um, are known to, to yoga, it's child's pose. 
This is a really good um, exercise or stretch, should I say, for everybody, no matter where your recording is along, um, if it's if it's just up into your axilla or if it is extending um, to wherever along the length of the arm. This one I love. This is a really good um, stretch to do. So with this one, what you want to do is you want to sit back on your um, heels. You want your knees, sorry, your knees to be hip width apart approximately and you want your um, feet to be together. And then with this one, essentially what you're doing is you start um, in a position like so, you sit back and then you reach as far forward as you can comfortably go. And with this particular one, it's a really lovely movement because you'll feel a stretch in the armpit here and extending up into the upper arm. Again, you just go to where your limit is and if you can stretch a little bit more as if you're stretching those fingers a tiny little bit more and um, just to add that extra stretch, hold it for a count of five and then come back and then come back up again. So just to repeat, you sit down on your um, heels and then you stretch and walk forward as far as you can. Hold that stretch and then release. And that particular exercise is a really lovely one if you um, are in the process of going for reconstruction and you have tissue expanders because a lot of the other exercises may prove to be too uncomfortable for you. Um, you wouldn't be able to lie on your side or uh, you'd find it uncomfortable lying on your back. Um, so this particular exercise or stretch um, is a lovely one to get that stretch in round the, the tissue, in round your um, surgical site and in round your upper arm with the cording. Um, but it's, it's a more comfortable stretch for you to achieve and to manage. Um, the other thing actually with that, with um, the um, child's pose stretch is that sometimes, especially with the tissue expanders, if you find that you're getting um, thickening of tissue, this child's pose stretch is a lovely stretch to do because it helps to just loosen um, that area up as well. So, so it's, a, it's a really lovely one to do. Obviously, um, if you do have problems with your knees, um, you know, you may want to to think otherwise um, and there, there's ones that we can show you for that um, that will achieve the same stretch um, but just in a different position. We'll come to that in a bit. Okay, so progression of that one is what we call um, child's pose but into window wipers or hands um, and knees into window wipers. And really what it's doing again is putting the cord onto a stretch but then just tighten it to a slightly different angle to increase that intensity of the stretch, hopefully to release that tightened tissue and, and to release the cord. So like we did before, we're sitting back onto our heels. We start off in the initial position where we lean as far forward as we can. And then like window wipers, we are just slowly turning round to one side reaching as far forward, holding that for a stretch or for a count of up to five seconds and then just slowly come back towards the centre. So you may want to take this in stages, five second hold and just slowly working yourself back to that 12 o'clock position again, holding it for five, then release. Then reach round a little bit more, say to one, two o'clock on a clock dial. Hold it for a count of five. Release. You may want to go round a little bit more. Hold it for a count of five. And release. Walking it back. Stretching into that. Holding it. 
releasing it and then back to 12 o'clock holding that stretch and release most people find that that's a really lovely stretch to do um, and a comfortable one at that um, what you may find is if if you want you can just work you're working away from your operated side and um, so if for example my right side is the operated side as I move my window wipers to the left that puts more of a stretch on my right side um, but equally I think to be honest it's as easy just working one side to the other so you start at 12 o'clock position or straight on go to one side work your way back go to the other work your way back um, remember it's a up to a five second hold um, with that stretch trying to stretch your fingers as far forward as you can so you're feeling that stretch without it being um, a sharp pain and then releasing and you want to repeat the sequence um, and it's entirely up to you I mean obviously like most of the other stretches we've set up to 10 times and um, you do as many as you feel is is achievable and comfortable for you to do we don't want to aggravate pain so work within your limitations because like everything with these the more you work on it the more hopefully the movement will improve you'll feel it easier and you'll be able to um to sort of work a little bit harder um, each time. Uh, just as an additional note with the window wiper um, movement, what I would say if you have had a hip replacement, please avoid this movement because it puts too much pressure on your hip, okay? The next um, stretch I'm gonna show you for your cord is a seated hand behind head stretch. So this is very similar to the one that we did earlier on lying on the floor but for those people that can't actually get to the floor they may find that this is a more achievable stretch. So with this one you're sitting on your seat obviously and um, you're getting your you're putting your hands behind your head and to link your fingers. Now the key to this is you want to keep your elbows back and particularly if you have problems with cording, your elbows are quite likely to want to creep forward. So you want to keep your elbows back and then you're going to just focus on bringing the elbow up. So focus more on taking the elbow up rather than the elbow coming down. The reason why I say that is because with this being my operated side, I really want to achieve a greater stretch in that armpit and into the upper arm. So if I focus on getting my elbows back and then doing that side bend and take my elbow as far up as possible, what I'm achieving there is I'm stretching all in round that um, armpit and upper arm area. Hold for five seconds and then release. If you wish, you can obviously go to the opposite side. But what you want to work on each time is getting that elbow up as high as you can as you bend to the side. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your body upright. I mean, if you do want to sit back on the chair for stability, that's absolutely fine. So that you're focusing on that movement. So again, just side bending, my operated elbows coming up, holding it for five seconds and then easing back to the start position. The other one that you can do with this is similar start position but this time you're twisting around. So you twist to one side turning at the waist and twist to the other. Again as in the first one you want to make sure those elbows are going to want to come forward. So you really want to make sure that you're keeping them back because that's how you're going to achieve more of an effective stretch on that cord and into that armpit. 
and relax. And likewise, just to the other side, keeping those elbows back, holding for a count of five, and then come back to the centre again and relax. So if we um, bring in a gym ball, I appreciate that not everybody has maybe got a, a gym ball, but this can be done on a table, sitting in front of a, your dining room table or kitchen table. And even if you had a smaller ball, like a football or a beach ball, you can achieve exactly the same movement as I am with this, um, with this Pilates ball. Now, I'm just gonna turn around to the side for this one. So hopefully you can see my back. The ball is um, in front of me, but what I want to, um, to show you with this one, this is a really lovely one to start with, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that we keep our upper trunk or our back lengthened. We don't want to cur curl over the ball because then that's not getting the extension to the cord. So you want your back to be kept lengthened or elongated. Um, what we can do is we can set our arms in the ball again, like the other position. Sorry, not like the other stretches when we were lying flat. We want to keep our arms straight. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll that ball forward as far. So your arms are going over the ball. Your back is lengthened and straight and you're holding it for a count of five and then you're rolling that ball back in towards the starting position. So feet are firmly on the floor. You're rolling the ball out, looking ahead, keeping that length in your back, going just to where you can feel that pinching where you feel the stretch into the armpit, into the upper arm, holding it for a count of five, and then coming back to the starting position. And like I say, this is a really lovely one to start with, so, and it's a nice gentle exercise. You may find it easier to do both arms, um, or you may find it um, that you want to just work on the affected side. So again, purpose of demonstration, my right side is my affected side. So I'm taking that arm, moving with the ball, holding that stretch, and then bring it gently back in. Okay. So with this again, um, if you had your kitchen table and your beach ball, all you're doing is just making sure that you're getting that movement out rather than your whole trunk. You're not moving from your waist, you're lengthening from your arm. So it's coming out from here rather than the movement coming from your trunk. Okay. Um, and again, you'd repeat that. Um, five second hold up to ten times or as as much as is comfortable and um, for you to manage given at what stage you're at. So the next exercise is a seated bilateral diagonal ball push. So we've learned the first move um, where we're going straight out in front and obviously that is helping to stretch the cord from the armpit into the upper and potentially lower arm. It's also helping to really stretch that connective tissue and fascia in around our um, sort of affected chest wall area. If we want to progress it a little bit more, um, like the other exercises, we just add a different direction. So with that one, or with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar movement where we're um, bringing the ball out, pushing it forward, but this time instead of going straight forward, we're going to go on a diagonal. So just um, to demonstrate, you're going to keep your trunk lengthened like always, and this time you're working with the ball and stretching over to one side. 
Now obviously my right side is my affected side there and I'm length, sorry, yes, my right side is my affected side and I'm lengthening, I'm pushing the ball out to my left. So as I'm doing that gentle movement, gentle stretch, it's lengthening all the connective tissue, all in round my arm, my elbow, and in round the right side of my body, including around my shoulder um, blade. And that's where it can become really tight. We know that our movements in our arm, your shoulder and your um, your shoulder joint and your shoulder um, blade and everything, it all works in combination whenever we're moving our arm into different directions. So really with these stretches we want to incorporate functional movement into the stretches. So if I was to go out to the right side, this time again it's just rolling with the ball, keeping my trunk lengthened out as far as I can to feel the stretch, holding it for a count of five and then coming back in. Now, obviously this exercise is with both hands and that makes it that little bit easier. If you're finding that too easy and you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, we bring in just the one arm, the affected side. So just to demonstrate, what we do with this is we use our affected side, similar movement. But what we can do is add a deep breath, okay? So we breathe in and then breathe out. Breathe in to come back. and breathe out. So let's just do that again. If I was to do it to the other side just for demonstration purposes. So this is how we can use diaphragmatic breathing to incorporate a deeper stretch to those tissues. So following surgery you have been issued a um, general range of movement exercise from your breast care nurses or physiotherapist um, and those are all good to increase your range of movement and they're very useful as well in conjunction with some of these cord and stretches. What we can do is one of the stretches that the physios use is to increase this movement here and very often they'll do it up against a door frame where you have to lean up and sort of hold the door frame and push into the um, frame to increase that range of movement. Another lovely one that you can do um, is it is an overhead yoga stretch and what it is is you link your thumbs in and basically rest your hands on top of your head and then you are stretching up 
as high as you can. Let me just come down here onto the floor so you can see it more clearly. So you interlink your thumbs, your hands are on top of your head and then you're bringing it up as high as you can. Now with this, what you're wanting to make sure is that your elbows are straight, okay? That they're back and that you're achieving that stretch. So, you, I mean, with this, you will feel the stretch in round here. And that's a great way, um, stretch if you find you've got good range of movement, but you just need that little bit more. That's a good one to work on. Um, again, it's not for everybody and it would be much more an advanced stretch, but that's one that um, is always worth noting if you do need that little bit of um, end range movement.